and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a video on writing formulae. This is mainly a practice video. I will show you a couple of examples but I do have a lot more detailed videos showing you the different techniques on how to write out formulae. First of all, sodium oxide. There are two ways that we can write formulae. The first way is to use a valency picture. So for a valency picture, you find the symbol of your first element, which is sodium. You draw a circle around it and you put a line to show the valency of that element. You then do the same for the second element, in this case it's oxygen, and that has a valency of 2, it's in group 6. And we can see that oxygen has a valency which is not being used. So we go back in and we fill that with another sodium. This leads us to a formula of Na2O. The second way that we can write formula is that we can find the symbol for our elements. So we have Na and O. We then find the valency, so 1 and 2. We swap the valency over We divide if necessary, so if there is a common factor, in this case there is not. And then finally we write out the formula. Obviously for this one you don't have to write out all these steps every time, once you get used to the process. And this leads you to the same formula. So let's do the same for calcium oxide. So calcium has a valency of 2. Oxygen also has a valency of 2, so they match up directly to give you a formula of CaO. And we can follow the same steps for our other method. So we have calcium, it has a valency of 2. Oxygen also has a valency of 2. If we swap them over, we still have 2 and 2. And here we do have a common factor, so we do need to divide, so we end up with 1. And then the formula is CaO. These examples have group ions, which you can find on page 8 of the databook. So we can do valency picture. Magnesium has a valency of 2. Nitrate has a formula of NO3. It's a 1 negative ion, so it has a valency of 1. So we can have two nitrates for every magnesium. For this, we then need to put in brackets to show that we have two nitrates rather than 32 oxygens. So if we go with the other method, we have symbol, valency, swap, divide, and formula. So we have symbols Mg and NO3, valency 2 and 1, we swap them over, so we have 1 and 2. Dividing, we have no common factor here, so we have Mg, NO3 and we've got 2, so we need to put brackets in. And then our final example has a transition metal. So iron is a transition metal, so you can't find the valency on the periodic table. It's given by the Roman numeral here, which is 2. So it's Fe with a valency of 2. Phosphate is PO4, it's a 3 minus iron. So you'll find that on page 8 of the data book. And for this one, we need to keep swapping over until all of the valencies have been used. Now, as you can see, that diagram gets quite complicated. And this is where the second method can be easier to use. So symbol, valency, swap, divide, and formula. So symbol, we have Fe, a valency of 2. Phosphate, PO4, valency of 3. We swap them over. No division is required here. And then that leads us to our final formula, Fe3, 
and then remember in the brackets PO4 2. Pause the video and try and find the formula for each of these. Right, so for lithium sulfide, lithium has a valency of 1, sulfur has a valency of 2. Now if we were to do that by the other method, we'd have lithium and sulfur. We would swap them over. No division is needed here. So we then have Li2 this. Okay, aluminium oxide. Aluminium has a valency of 3. Oxygen has a valency of 2. So we need to keep swapping over until all valencies have been used up. If we use the other method, we have Al with a valency of 3, oxygen with a valency of 2. We swap them over. We don't need to do any division for this one. So we have Al2, O3. Okay, calcium bromide. Calcium has a valency of 2. Bromine has a valency of 1. We can do the other method where we swap them over. And that leads us to our formula of CaBr2. The copper is a transition metal, so the 2 in Roman numerals is the valency. Oxygen also has a valency of 2. So if you were doing the other method, you do have to take care with this one. They both have a valency of 2, so when you swap them over it's the same, which means that you do need to divide them. So we have a formula of CuO. Cobalt is another transition metal, this time with a valency of 2. Chlorine has a valency of 1, so we require two chlorines. So if we use the other method, we have the symbols, the valency, we swap them over. No need to do any division. And we have a formula of COCl2. Iron, transition metal with a valency of 3 in this case, and fluorine, which has a valency of 1. So by the other method, if we take the valencies, we swap them over, we have Fe, F3. Sodium nitrate, so we have a group ion here, so we need to use page 8 of the data book. Sodium has a valency of 1. Nitrate has a formula NO3, also a valency of 1. And we can use our other method, we just need to keep the group together. So they each have a valency of 1, if you swap them over it just stays as it is. So we have NaNO3 as our formula. Zinc is a transition metal using the Roman numerals to get the valency. Sulfate, you can find on page 8 of your data book, also has a valency of 2. So when we swap these over, they remain the same, so we do need to do the division step, which then gives us a formula of ZnSO4. And our final two examples, we have aluminium carbonate. Aluminium has a valency of 3, Carbonate you will find on page 8 of the data book with a valency of 2. We need to alternate in the diagram until we have no more valencies to use. Or we can use the second method where we swap over the valencies. So we have a valency of 3 for aluminium and a valency of 2 for carbonate. If we swap these over, we have 2 and 3, there is no common factor. So we have Al2, CO3 with a 3 on the outside of the brackets. And then our final example is two group ions. So we have NH4, which has a valency of 1, 
and phosphate with a valency of 3. If we use our second method, we have NH4, PO4, ammonium with a valency of 1, phosphate with a valency of 3, can swap them over, no division required here, but we need brackets for the NH4 and no brackets for the PO4. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you found a method to write out formulae. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.